So now we have a nice shiny new Express app that we can easily serve up static content with. But what if I want to serve up more dynamic content? Um, what if I want to have more dynamic responses that are potentially um, returned from a form? Okay. Well, in order to do that, um, typically what we're going to we're, what we're going to add is something called a, a view engine or in, in a group of views. Okay. This creates a way that we can we can take some data from the back end and then render it as HTML content. So there's a variety of different view engines that are available to, to work with Express. Um, the one that we're specifically going to use this semester is one called Handlebars. Okay. So Handlebars lets us write files, these view files, that are sort of a mix of uh, static HTML parts and more dynamic little bits of JavaScript where we can inject some data into that and we can inject it dynamically. So we need to install that first. Um, if you look at NPM, you'll see that there is a, a package called Handlebars. Um, that one you can you, you, that one can be used. It does have some a little bit of issues to get up and, and running with. Um, so what I'm actually going to use is is a different one called Express Handlebars, and this one definitely has a, a much lower learning curve. Um, it's easier to get up and started because a lot of kind of common problems with getting Handlebars and Express set up have already been resolved. So we're going to install Express handle bars. So you'll see there's a dash there separating the two words. I'm going to install that. If you look at my package.json now, you'll see that I have express handlebars installed and, and I've got the latest version installed which is 5.1.0. Okay. If we read up on the documentation for Express Handlebars, which we can find out on the NPM website, npmjs.org, um, we'll find that there's a few things that we need to do to get Handlebars set up. Um, so this is a good place to, to go look and, and see what you need to do to, to get initially running. Um, so we'll, we'll do some of those setups here. Um, some of the, that, that process starting with the project that we already have. Um, it gives you some info about how you need to set up your directory structure, as you can see here, um, as well as there's also some info about you know, a basic project skeleton. Um, so if you do need to refer back to, to how to do this, um, this is definitely the place to read. This has been added already as a, a reading assignment on uh, Perusal. Okay. So we've installed Express Handlebars. Um, we need to actually create some files first. So we'll create that directory structure as you kind of saw on the NPM documentation. So let's create a folder named Views first. Um, and you'll notice I'm creating this basically at the root. It's at the same level as my public and my node modules folder. Inside of views, I need to create a new file. This is going to be home.handlebars. Okay. And this is actually going to be the new place for our home page. So what I'm going to do to start this off, you'll notice I've called it home.handlebars. Handlebars is that extension. So this is not .html, it's, it's .handlebars. I'm going to take all the code that I have currently in index.html, I'm actually going to move it over. Okay, So we're going to move that over to um, this, this view here. So that's good. Now I need to also change a little bit of code on the back end to start rendering this view. So let's say I go to, to server.js, okay? And the first thing I need to do is I need to configure my application to use handlebars as a view engine, okay? 
So up here, where I'm where I'm creating the application, I'm going to say create the application, uh, create and configure application. I'm going to do a little bit more here. I need to put two additional pieces. So first, I'm going to say app dot engine. Oh, actually, before I do that, um, I do need to add a require. So I'm going to add in const HBS, short for handlebars, require. And we want the express handlebars package. So I'm going to require express handlebars, save it to a variable called HBS. Okay. Now with the app, I can say app.engine. And I'm going to tell it that we want to create a, a view engine called Handlebars. And the implementation for that engine uses the class, the, the thing that we just imported. So now our Express application now has a, a view engine called Handlebars. So here's the implementation of that engine, and that's the name of the engine. Next, I need to actually change the default view engine to our engine here that we just created. Okay, so I need to say app set. We're going to set the view engine property of our app. So this sets a property or configuration of the Express app. So we're going to say view engine, and then the name that we gave it on the previous line was handle bars. Those two lines together are going to tell our server whenever it needs to render a view that it's going to use handlebars to do it. So now that we've got that, we can start defining routes that are actually going to use these um, views. So first view I want to I want to set up is actually going to be my home page. So let's set up a route here for that app dot get. And I'm going to tell it to get, when I try to get the root, which is the home page, we're going to then implement the handler there. So request response. When it gets that, it's going to render, right? So, so previously we've said, um, you want to send the response back, either send a file or send a string back. Here we can also say render, and that will render a view by a certain name. So here I'm going to say I want to render the home view. When you request the root path, we want to render the home view. And that's the home.handlebars page that we just created. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I need to get my server back up and running. So I've done that now. I'm going to look in the browser at that server. Okay. Now we can see here it says no such file or directory. Um, example project views layouts main dot handlebars. So you can see that it's still missing. It's saying it's looking for this layout file, which I haven't created yet. Um, now layout's useful because it allows us to take parts of our website that appear on every page and make them standardize. Um, so rather than duplicating the same code on every page, I can use this layout to remove and pull out that duplicated code. So here let's let's create a, uh, our layout and we'll kind of walk through how you might set that up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new folder. And this needs to be under the views folder. I'm going to create a new folder called layouts. So inside of views, I have a folder called layouts. Inside of that, I now have I need to create a file. And specifically, this needs to be called main.handlebars. Okay. So under views layout, we have main handlebars and we have home handlebars that's just under views. It's not inside of layouts. So let's say I, I start with that file and, and I don't add anything to it. 
Um, if I try to refresh the page now, we'll see that there's actually nothing uh, because there is one thing I have to do um, for sure, always with my layouts. Okay. So, so one of the things I have to do is I have to have an area where I say, well, let's include the body of my view. So we've got the, the, the main, this layout, which is the kind of standard things that are repeated on every page. But somewhere inside of there, I have to say, let's include the body of the page. Let's include the body of the page. So if once I do that, OK, well, now I'm bringing everything over. Right? But if I leave it this way, well, then there's I'm not really getting the benefit of the layout. So what I need to do is I need to look at my pages and figure out what are the parts of those pages that I can reuse. What are the parts of those pages that I want to appear on every page? So I can take that out of my view and put that in my layout. Okay, so I know we took everything here. Remember, we previously took everything from index and tossed it just into home.handlebars at the moment. Well, I'm going to go back to, to index.html and grab it again. I'm going to throw it in main. Okay, so if I'm looking at main, right, and, and now I've got everything that was in our home page. I can see that there's a few places that are going to need to change, right? So for instance, what I have here in the body, well, I don't want to, to say home page on every page. So that's the part um, that I might want to replace. So let's say inside a body, we put this special um, sequence, which is body. So handlebars uses this to say, let's replace the content of the view here. Okay, so let's start with that. Let's say, let's say I switch this here. Okay, so this is my layout now. It's got the main part of the document, which is that replacement. And then I need to go to my view and say, well, what parts of that are actually unique to the page? Right? It's the parts that we want to inject as the body. So if I extract that out, format document, put these side by side. What you can see is here's my layout, which has all the standard head um, information and such, um, including my, my JavaScript that I'm going to be using everywhere, and my st style sheets that I'm going to be using for the whole website. Um, but I've got broken out my, my content for this page into a separate file. So I have main.handlebars, which is my layout. I have home.handlebars, which is my home page. So let's say we look at that now. Oh, great, right? Everything looks good. Okay, so we've got these two files are kind of being merged together. You've got the layout and then you've got the individual view, which kind of represents the individual page. Now we'll see at least if you pay close attention to what's going on here, you may notice that there are some additional things that I might need to change. So for instance here, I have this title Right? This title really does need to be different on every page. Okay? Now, in order to do that, I'm going to need to feed some additional data to my view. Okay? So we saw that I can replace the content of the, the body, the content of the view, using this curly braces body thing. Right? And, and anytime you see triple curly braces, that means says, go ahead and put it in there and don't escape any of the HTML that you find there. Okay, if I put just single, if I just put um, two curly braces, that says go ahead and put it there, but escape any HTML that you find. Okay, which is kind of your default. You usually don't want to let the user put in HTML. Okay, so so here I want them to somehow be able to enter the title. Okay. I want the title to go here and be replaced here. Problem is, where do I find the title? Well, I need to go back to my server.js, look at my route. Um, when I render, I can actually pass additional data to the view. Okay, so, so here I want to pass the title, which is going to be the, the head of the page. So if I say here, 
going to pass in an object. So this is the name of the view. The second parameter is an object that contains all the actual data, I, all the extra data I want to pass. So here I'm going to say let's pass the title. Remember that's the name that I used when I defined the layout. I could also use that in my, my view as well, but here I've got the title parameter. And I want to set it to test or test title. Okay. So, so in my route, I'm saying let's render the home view, but let's also tell it that the title is test title. Now, if I look at that in the browser, you can see how the title's changed. It's changed to test title. So I can use my server, I can, in the back end here, I can pass in additional bits of data that I need to be rendered in my page. So that's good. That's good. That will get me started there. Um, let's go ahead and change this to home page because I, I do actually want that to be the title of this page. So I refresh it and, and that's what I get. Okay, so, so the general general kind of pattern here with handlebars is, is you can put these pair of, of double curly braces and put any sort of data in there that you want to pass. Um, the special one being though for at the, the layout, um, you get the special one triple bars body um, that allows us to inject the content of the view, the part of the page that's you know kind of different. Okay, so we can start with that. Now, what if I want all of my pages to have a header and a footer, um, which is kind of a common requirement. Um, and in fact, I'm probably gonna at some point want to ramp that up and, and actually have it be a navbar. But for the moment, let's, let's say we wanna add a header and footer to all of our pages. Um, I could add that content to the body, but then I would have to duplicate it on every page. Um, so I'm going to add it to my layout. So in here, let's add a header. In there, I'm going to say header. I'm going to add a footer. Save that. Refresh. OK, cool. Um, and this, this content will now appear on every page. Um, so let's style it up a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. So for instance, on the footer, <coughs> um, let's add a few bootstrap classes to make it look good. So class, um, common things I might want to do for the footer is change the color. So let's make it dark. Um, now, as soon as I make it dark, We'll see that the, the text is hard to read, so I also need to change the text color. So I'm going to change this to text white. And let me collapse this and put it over here. So we can see these things side by side. So we've got a, a dark background and, and white text. I might also want to put in a little bit of padding, so P3, to kind of space it out. Um, text right to maybe put my, or sorry, um, P3 in there. I've got that. Um, I might want to put in copyright in there with my name. So I might say at copy copyright uh, Paul or I might just say Paul call copy Paul Smith 2020 put that in there and usually I make my my copyright maybe I make that right aligned so I do text right here So we get kind of a start of a footer there. Um, and that footer will, as we kind of mentioned, that will appear on every page. Um, on my header, um, let's go ahead and, and, and ramp this up a little bit. I'm going to put a bootstrap. I'm going to convert this. Or I'll, actually, I just want to change the background color, the colors first. So I'm going to say class 
BG dark text white and give it a little bit of padding. So we'll start with this. Okay. So we've got kind of a basic header and footer. Um, you'll notice that my footer is not being pushed down to the bottom of the page. Um, so I want to make sure that that happens. Um, so what I'm going to do here to make that happen is I'm going to turn this page um, into a Flexbox um, container um, that is a column. So I'm going to add a class to my body. Um, and that was cl those classes I need to add here are dflex. Um, I need to add flex column. And so that will turn into a flex container. Um, but then I also then need to basically get it to be tall enough. So I'm going to add in min vh100. So that's going to set the minimum height of it, the minimum height of the body to 100 vh. So that's 100% of the viewport height. Now, nothing's happened yet. I still need to make the body size actually grow. So adding those classes there, let's wrap a, a div around the body and give that a class of D flex or sorry, flex grow one. So those things together are going to make this so that the the body grows, which means that the footer sticks at the bottom. Format this real quick. Next up. Um, so that gets us a kind of a basic layout there. Now you might ask, why didn't I make that main? Well, um, it may be for some page, pages um, that that may be sensical to have that be main. Um, but more than likely, I'm going to have some pages throughout my website where maybe there's more than one section and maybe the main doesn't immediately start here. Um, so rather than defining the main here in the layout, I'm going to allow that to be something that I define in each of my views. So let's say I want to add the main tag, right? I, I'm not going to add it here. Um, I'm actually going to add it into my view. So going to my view, Let's add a main here. Um, that allows my, my layout to be a lot more flexible, putting it in here. And let's give this a class of container. And again, container is something I could have stick, stuck on the layout, but more often than not, I find that if I, if I put my containers um, into the layout, I end up with a less flexible layout. Okay. So now we have a, a main that's in the container that's going to keep this page from extending to the full width as you can kind of see there. The home page is inset a little bit. Okay. So I have my main, which is my I have my home, which is my view for the home page, and then I have this main, which is the standard layout I'm going to use. Okay. So 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 far that's that's a little bit of you know, it may not seem like much um, because I only have that one page, so it may seem a little bit redundant. So let's add a second page. So that second page is going to be our contact page. So I want to add this to my view. Um, do be careful that you add it to the views, not the layouts folder. If you add it under layouts folder, it won't be able to find it. Um, so I'm going to add it to the views folder. I'm going to say contact.h dot handlebars. So I have my my home dot handlebars and I have my contact dot handlebars. Okay. Um, so let's let's lay out a basic layout here. So I'm going to start with main on the outside. I'm going to give that a class of container again. 
And again, part of the reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing this still in the view is because usually I'll end up finding that I want additional parts in there outside of main, such as a Jumatron or, or other pieces like that. So in here, let's add a header. So H1, this is gonna be the contact form. Put a little space in there, format it. Okay. Now, I've got two views here. I've got my home view, I've got my contact view. You can see those in that folder. You can see my layout has, has main.handlebars in there. But if I were to try and visit the contact page right now, it wouldn't be able to find it because I haven't created a route for it yet. Um, so let's go back to our server and I wanted to find those routes. So remember I already defined this route for the home page. Okay, so when you go to the root, it's going to render the home view with the title of home page. So I need to add another route here. I'm going to say when you ask for the contact page, so when you, you get the contact page, we're going to go render the contact view and the title of that page is going to be contact form. So I'm gonna go now to the browser and let's try to go to slash contact. Okay, and you can see the page being rendered correctly now. Okay. I don't have any content in it yet, uh, but I'm getting the correct title in the title bar and I've got the, the contact form or that header that I put in there. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take in that code that we wrote previously for our contact form. Remember on the outside um, that we need to have a form tag anytime we create a form um, that's generally gonna have an ID so we can refer to it in JavaScript. Contact form. The method, here we're gonna want it to post because it's gonna have an effect, it's gonna send a message. I'm going to say post and the action is it's going to go to slash contact. So initially we're getting this first version, which is going to be the, this is if you do a get form, a get request, you get the empty, get the empty form. And as soon as you hit submit, we're going to, to contact again, but with a, a post request. So, so let's put that here. I'm gonna now bring in everything that I have um, from the previous example. So you can see I brought in the, the name field as well as the message field. I've got the submit button here as well. So we have a, just a very basic form, okay? So now that I've got that, I can actually hit send and it'll try to post it but remember, it, it doesn't have that post route yet. So I still need to create that. So let's go through the, the process of creating that route. I need to go back to my server.js and we're gonna add a route in here for that post request. So you remember we added a route as, as get. A app get is creating a, a get route and create a put route or sorry post route so here we're gonna do post and I'm gonna say slash contact so if you do a post you're gonna get this route instead of the this route which just gives you the initial form it needs to take the request the response and then we need to process the inputs so the first thing I generally want to do is I want to read the values that came from the, the front end. So I'm going to say const name is equal to request.body.name. And, and this name, remember that comes from the name property on the form field. So this is the name of this field is name. 
Um, and the name of this field is message. So we'll have name here and, and message for that second field. So I can read both of those. Cots name, cots message is equal to request dot body dot message. Okay. So we can start with that. Um, but one of the things I need to remember is I, so far in this app, I haven't hooked up um, the logic to actually parse the body yet. Um, so I do need to add in the middleware towards the top, and I'm going to add that in this section to process or, or decode the body of the request, which includes all the fields that the user submits. So I'm going to say app use. We're going to say express dot URL encoded, and that's the middleware I'm going to add. Now, if I simply add that as such, um, you'll see it's already, NodeMon's already restarted the server. I mean, it said deprecated, body parser deprecated, undefined extended, provide extended option. So it used to be that you didn't have to provide any additional data to this URL encoded middleware. Um, nowadays, you, you're required to either pass true or false um, for this extended property. Um, what it does, is, as I gather, is it enables some additional sort of parsing, non-standard parsing, which as, as far as I can tell, I don't think is something you want. Um, so, so it's generally something I, I turn off because it's usually not desirable behavior. It's, it's kind of non-standard behavior. So we're going to turn that extended behavior off. Okay. So we've got that. Um, and we can go back to this request because now we can actually have the values to work with. Now, I do find it helpful to, to go ahead and log both of the val, all the values that I have, at least for an initial sort of setup. Um, you will find that eventually you probably want to remove these, um, but they do really help for debugging at the moment. So I'm going to log the, the values that we received. Debug, name, I'm using template strings. To write this out, which is why you're going to see that they, they start and end with graves. So the message, the name, and the message, we're going to log both of those things out. So get the values from the form and then log them. We're going to now start building up the data that we need to send to the form. Um, giving back results and, and individual feedback about each of the different fields and, and all of those values we need to repopulate the form, especially if there um, are any errors. Okay, So I'm going to create an object here, a variable here. I'm going to call it data. And this is going to be all of the, the data that we need to send back to the view. Okay, So what is the data I need to send back? Well. It needs to have a title, so I'm going to go ahead and add that here. So I still want the title of that page to be contact form. Um, I want to initialize is valid to true. So we're going to, because I do actually need to send that value back to the server. I mean, back to the, the client, I, I do need the, the form to know, is it submitted valid or is it not submitted? Is it submitted with errors or is it submitted without errors? Um, we'll use that in a minute. Um, I need to know what the name and the message is that the user submitted. So I'm also going to add those pieces here. Um, now, I'm using a little bit of a shorthand for adding these properties to the object. Um, I could write this as, as name colon name. So here I'm saying there's a, a property with the name of name, and the, the actual value of that is the value of this variable. Um, but when you want the name of your property to be the same as the name of your variable, you can actually shorthand it like so. 
Um, so that's short for name colon name, and this is short for, for message colon message. So we have an object here. Okay. I also want to check if the fields are valid, and if they're invalid, I want to let the user know. So first I'm going to check if, the, if they've not provided a name. If they've not provided a name, then the form is invalid. So I'm going to say invalid is false. It's equal to false. Okay. I'm also going to provide an error message for the name field. So I'm going to set data um, name error. So I'm adding another property to this data object. And we're going to give that the message name not provided. Okay, so this gives me a way to, you know, add additional, I can add additional properties to this object and, and have it all sent back. Okay, um, I'm going to say if there is not a message, then I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I want to let the front end know that the, the form is not valid. So we're going to set that to false. And then I'm going to say message error. Is equal to message not provided. So what I'm ending up building out is this is the data object has everything that the the form that the form will end up need end up needing to to actually render itself. Um, I also want some sort of message to say, okay, everything's good. We sent the message, or um, hey, you have some problems. You need to fix those. So I'm going to add another property. We'll call it um, result. Um, or maybe I'll call it result message. The reason I can't just call it message is because I already have a property named message. So I'm going to call it result here. Um, so we're going to say data. If the data is valid, if we got through all that and everything's good, then the, the result is message sent. Otherwise, we're going to say, please fix the errors above. Okay. So if it's valid, we get one message. If, it's in, if any field is invalid, we get a different message. Now that I've got my data object fully built up, now I can actually render the, review, render the view. So remember previously, in response to the get request, we're going ahead and rendering the contact view but we're only passing in this title, right? Um, here I'm going to be rendering the contact view as well, um, but I'm going to add in this all of this additional data, which then we can end up rendering with our contact view. So in here, um, I want to say res.render. So remember the first argument to render is the name of the view. So we're going to render the contact view. I'm going to render that, then passing in all of the data. Okay. So that second parameter is all the additional data that you want to send back to the view. And those that data can be used in your layout. It can also be used in your um, view itself. So I'm going to save that. And now let's see what happens when I try to submit the form. Okay. Um, it looks like um, everything's fine, right? So to some sense, right? I can submit it. It doesn't go to an error page, um, but I'm not getting any sort of feedback on whether or not my data is incorrect, right? So, so what's happening is I am sending this data to, to the view, but I haven't hooked it up to be used anywhere yet. So, so all this data that I'm sending in the view doesn't have a place to go. Okay. 
So what I need to do is go back to my contact view and start adding in places for me to render the data that I've given to my view. Okay. So, so first thing I want to do is I want to set the value. I want to set the value for each of these form fields um, or, or the, the content here um, to be the content that is sent back. So here we're going to say value is equal to, um, and then in, in double curly braces, we're going to say, okay, I want the value of the name to be name, because that's what we added it back to this, this data object. Okay, so this is going to re be replaced with the name that the user has entered. Similarly with the text area, I need to pass back the, the text that the user has entered. So we're going to put the message here. So we've got the name and we've got the message. All right, so let's try that real quick with just those two changes. If I resubmit the form, you can see it there. Clear it out, start over. So we say Paul Smith test. When I submit the form, it now keeps those values um, because I've extracted them, right? I pulled them out of the, the body, but then I've also added them back to the data we're sending back to the browser. Okay, so I've got my name and my message there. I still need a place to show the actual error messages. Um, so underneath the inputs, I'm gonna add some divs. So this one's gonna be a uh, class uh, class text danger. It's going to make it appear red. And here I'm going to add in the the name error field. So we're gonna, here we're going to display the error. I'm going to do the same thing with the text area as well. So here we're going to display any error that occurred with validating the um, validating the message. So class text danger uh, name error or this would be message error. Okay. So now if I leave the field blank, the form blank, you can see that both of those things get filled in. So I have a name error and I have a message error. Now you might ask Let's say I go to this page initially, what's happening with those fields, name error and, and message error? Um, I haven't provided values for those. Um, so handlebars were already, if you have an undefined or, or empty string value, they'll end up just putting it here as, as empty string. So if I were to inspect the HTML right now, I'm gonna see the blank form does have those divs, does have those placeholders for the error message. But right now there's no text there, which is which is where you're not seeing them. It's because they currently have no text inside of them. Okay, but as soon as I submit it, it's gonna populate, it's gonna send that data to the back end. It populates those error messages, sends them back to the view, view plops them into there. Okay. I'm also need a placeholder for the, the final result of the form. So we're going to add in another form group here. Div class form group. And I'm going to add in an output tag here because this is going to be kind of the output of the form. I'm going to give this one, I'm going to just put in the result here. So we've got the result. Send, and now we can see that error as well, right? So I, I start with a clean form, no messages shown. I submit it, and then I start seeing those, those individual message here. Now you may notice that this error message right now is not being shown in red. Um, so if you look at how we did, if we think about how we did it previously, okay, well we gave it a class text danger, okay? 
So, so let's add that real quickly here, class text danger. Okay, now note that this is going to always give it a class of text danger, regardless of whether the it's an error message or not. So for instance, if I set in, let's let me fill in these values. Okay, so those error message go away. It says message sent as I would expect because all the fields are valid, um, but it's still showing up in red, right? So I need to have some way in my, in my view to say, render it this way under certain conditions or render it another way, right? And, and we would normally think of that as well, I need to introduce an if statement. Um, you might also think, well, maybe I could do a turn area. Unfortunately, turn areas are, are not supported with handlebars. What I can do though is is do a quick um, is to do an if statement. Now, the way you write if statements in handlebars is a little bit um, it's a little bit getting used to. Um, you notice how we can start and end these replacements with curly braces. Um, the way I add in an if statement is very similar. So I'm going to start with the curly braces, and then I'm going to say hash if. Okay, so this is basically going to start an if block. And I need to tell it what's the condition that we're switching on. So we're going to say if is valid. If it's valid, then we want to render it one way, or we're going to render it another way. So if, it, if it's valid, there's no errors. And then otherwise, we're going to render it a different way. So I need to say if there, the way I put in an else is like so. And then finally, I'll end that with slash if. So this kind of ends our if block. This is the start of our else block. If I didn't want an else block, then I just I wouldn't have an else here. I would just have the the hash if to beginning and the hash. If. Um, and the slash if to end it. Okay, so this is going to give it a class of success if if it's valid. Otherwise, I'm going to give it a class of, of danger if it's not valid. All right, so let's try submitting the form again. Okay, we can see if I fill in all the values, it shows message sent in green. If I don't fill in all the values, it's going to show in red. So I can use those um, handlebars, the curly braces, um, to kind of put in content that I've, I, data that I've got from the bad end to just replace it. Um, but I can also use if statements like this to switch. Okay. Um, there's also a for each loop, which you can read on the bootstrap, sorry, on the, the handlebars documentation of, of kind of how to use that. And I'll we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but there's your kind of your basic start to handlebars. Um, so to review, you know, looking back, we've looked at, we've made this view now. Let's kind of look briefly at, at where some of that data came from, right? So, so we looked at that. We've got the um, the name error here, and we've got the name, right? So that comes from here. I'm setting the name and the message. That's what's giving us those values that we can use. Um, and here I'm setting name error. If there is an error, which is what's going up here. Here I'm setting data message error, yada, yada. Um, but finally, the most important thing here is when I render the view is I actually pass this whole data object. So anything in that data object is now stuff that I can refer to in my view. Now, before we leave here, I do want to improve one little thing. Um, right now, it's not easy to get between the, the home page and the contact page. I probably want to put in a quick nav bar so that I can jump between those two things. Okay. And I want that same nav bar to be available on all pages. So let's go to our, our layout, which is main handlebars, and that's in the layouts folder. Um, I will then add in a little bit of code to render it 
they render the top as a navbar. So I'm going to remove the classes that we already had. Boop. All those are gone. And let's add in the classes that I need to have a navbar here. Um, this is this is just to keep it simple. I'm going to make it a non-responsive navbar, so it's always going to be the links are always going to be visible. There's not going to be the hamburger menu. Um, but for a, a real site, a more complicated site, you'll probably want to make it responsive. Um, but for two links here, I'm just adding a home and contact link. This will this will be fine. So I need to give it the navbar class. This is going to be a light colored navbar. Uh, with a background that's lightly colored. And I'm going to add navbar expand. Without a break point to say that I always want it to be expanded. Okay, rather than having it say header here, let's add a place to put in the name of our company or our brand. So add an anchor tag with a class of navbar brand. Um, this is going to point to the home page. So the href link is going to go to slash. That's the link to our home page. I'm just going to put in brand here is generic. Um, and then I need to start adding in the links. So links need to go into an unordered list. That unordered list needs to have a class of navbar nav. Um, and then I need to add in a few nav, a few items. So let's say I want to have li class nav item. And I want to have an anchor tag that goes between an anchor tag for that nav item. So this is going to be class nav link. And the text of this will be home. The href, this link is going to take you, just like the brand, take you back to the home page slash. I'm going to duplicate this to add one more menu item, nav item, nav link. This is going to go to contact with the text shown of contact. There we go. So I've got a very simple nav bar that just has a link to the home page and the contact form, as well as being able to click on the brand to go to the home page. So that makes it much easier to jump between different pages and, and, and do some testing with the contact form. Okay, um, that's it for this example. So that should get you started with kind of a simple web page that you can, you can actually have forms that um, send data back to the user. Um, so you can see I'm sending back um, like error messages with the, you know what fields are invalid or what what fields are not, um, and I can also send back the the actual values that the user started to type in. That's the end here. I'll see you in the next video.